My name is George Jessel. And I haven't got a secret, but have you heard this one? A friend of mine is a zoologist, and he crossed a parrot and a tiger. I said, well, what did you get? He said, I don't know, but when it talks, I listen. <laughs> I've got a secret. Sorry, Gary Moore. Thanks very, very much. And welcome to a midsummer edition of I've Got a Secret. I would like to introduce, in spite of the fact that it's a very hot night in New York, the coolest panel in all television. First, Bill Cullen, and then Betsy Palmer, and Henry Morgan, and Bess Myers. And we are complete. <laughs> and before getting on with the show, a special announcement for those of you who have been bugging us for the last week. Please stay tuned at the end of the program for an important announcement about the cement blocks and the footprints. All right? Now, uh, panel, you all ready to play the game? Oh. All right, may we have our first contestant, please. There they are. Now, uh, panel, this is the Manhattan Beach Quartet who will play for us in a few minutes. The drums you see there on the stand are mine because I'm going to be hammy and sit in with them for a bit. The young gentleman is their leader, and he is also the one who has the secret. So if you'll join me at the desk, young man, the young ladies can be seated, and we can proceed, all right? Hi, how are you? Can you tell the panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? My name is Bennett Zarif, and I'm from Manhattan Beach. Bennett Zarif. Z-A-R-I-E-F, Zarif, and he is from Manhattan Beach. Now, if you whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Here we go. Well, that's nice, but there's more to it. Now, wait, wait. <laughs> Jolson used to say, you ain't heard nothing yet. Panel, to help you with the game, the clue concerns something he is. And Henry, I think we'll start with you, please. Something he is. Uh, oh, he. Bennett, are you related to any of the young ladies on the platform? Uh, yes, I am. You related to all of them? Yes, I am. That's all. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice start, but it's far from being the secret. $20 down, $60 to go, and we go, please, to Bess Myers. Yeah, well, Bennett, that wouldn't be hard to see because you're also very attractive. And, you know, uh, the name uh, Zarif is um, a familiar one to me. Has it been in the newspapers or was it several years back when you were all born? Oh, boy. <laughs> yes? Yes, sir. Are you very, very famous? How many are four? Yes. Quadruplets. Quadruplets? <laughs> That's yes. it, quadruplets. <laughs> You see, Chester, I told you they'd guess right away. No, it's a secret. <laughs> I didn't. I never thought but you'd get it in a million years. Pardon? But the secret is something he is. Well, calling... Yes, well, he is, well, he is, he is a quadruplet. The calling this group a quartet is really, as I say, an understatement, or as you said, because they are not only brothers and sisters, but quadruplets. Sixteen years ago, these kids made headlines by being the first quadruplets born in the New York area. Uh, let's go over and meet the young ladies. Huh? Young ladies, want to stand up? There you are. Hi. Right. Watch yourself. Here goes the platform. I hope it's supposed to. <coughs> now, this is Issa on flute, and this is Penny, who plays clarinet, and Lanny normally plays piano, but tonight we are replacing her because we want her to sing in the number that we're about to play. And so, as a pianist, we have a newcomer to the musical world named Norman Paris, who we think has a chance. Hi, Norman. <laughs> Now, if you young ladies and young gentlemen will take off, uh, what do we play, Istanbul? Okay. Doesn't make any difference on my instrument, it all sounds the same, so... Uh...
Charlie and a good sound, too, and no wonder their dad, I worked with him many times, their dad is one of our finest CBS musicians, and what I think is a wonderful coincidence, Vern Gamble, who is our technical director here tonight on this show, when he saw the kids, he couldn't believe that they had grown, you know, from when he first knew about them, because he was working with their father in this very studio 16 years ago when he got a phone call saying you're the father of quadruples. <laughs> Young ladies and young gentlemen, your Bristol Myers gift package will be waiting for you off stage, as well as the money that you've earned, and it's been real joy knowing you. Say hello to your dad for me. <laughs> Their father is a fabulously fine violinist, and we were jamming, having a jam session here between rehearsals, and do you know what they play when they're having fun? Rock and roll. <laughs> and this must kill their father if at home they play. Yeah, na, 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 oh well. Now, <laughs> oh boy. May we have our next contestant, please? Will you come in? <laughs> King and his court. All right, sir, you have a seat. Will you tell the panel, please, what your name is and where you're from? I'm Eddie Fainer from Walla Walla, Washington. Mr. Fainer, and I couldn't help but notice that you had on a uniform. It came to my attention when you walked in. <laughs> Could you tell us, Eddie, what it is that you do for a living? I play ball for a living. He is a professional softball player. Now, if you'll whisper your secret to me, we'll show it at the same time to our audience at home. Here we go. And that, that's your secret, huh? No, that's right. That's not my secret. That's not your secret? No. Well, let's try again. <laughs> ah. That, then, of course, is your secret. That's right. That's not my secret. That's not your secret. Come again. That's got to be your secret, huh? No, that's not my secret yet. Not your secret yet. All right. Wow. Is, um... No, that's not my secret. Give you one more chance. And there is documentation for this. All right, <laughs> panel, a clue to Mr. Fainer's secret is something that he did. We'll start with Betsy Palmer, please. Oh, dear. You did an awful lot, didn't you, Mr. Fainer? <laughs> yes, he did. Did you do this alone? No, I did not. As did far you... as, uh... Let's say that he had to have help, but the secrets, as expressed, concern his accomplishment... His accomplishment. ...among the group, yes. Well, did you do it with your team? Yes. And it was the baseball team? Softball team. Softball. There's a difference? A little. Really? I didn't know. Well, uh... It's the same thing as soccer, Betsy. No, now that I know. <laughs> uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> don't, because I'm not bright about sports. Okay. Um, there's something that you did. Did it happen to you recently, Mr. Fainer? This particular thing That's was a few years back. A few years back. Did you do it all in one game like you did a no-hit, no-run, no base? So well, no, that's not the secret, but it happens that he has pitched a no-hit game. He's pitched 409 no-hit games. Those actually. are two of his secrets, then. 409 no-hit games and used shutouts uh, where the other team didn't score at all. Got some hits but didn't score. He hasn't done too well there. He's only pitched 734 of those. Why didn't the Dodgers have you all this time? <laughs> He's making too much money on his own. Oh. $20 down, $60 to go. We go please to Henry Morgan. <laughs> you know, the word is quadruplets. But aside from that, I just what? What? You did bad enough to America with like a cigarette should. You should uh, straighten up on quadruplets. Quadruplets. You bet. Um, Mr. What did quadruplets. I'll Ruthless. tell the I'll, I'll tell the quadruplets. quadruplets. I'll be glad to know it. Oh, it's quadruplets. Quintuplets. Right. 
I'm a last-ditch fighter. I know I'm going to lose in the end. <laughs> You're going to lose here, I'll guarantee you. The other uh, comical announcement I have to make is that <laughs> Betsy doesn't know anything about sports. Does that make a difference? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Fainter. <laughs> Down and $40 gone, and we go to Beth Myers, please. I love when that happens. Honestly. Uh, Mr. Spanner, uh, this team, do you own it, by the way? Uh, mostly. It's a... Uh... No, Betsy, it's too late. No, it's too late, Bess. You own it mostly? You own it with other people? Well, it's not very big. Oh, it's not very big. Is it as many men in the team as should be? No, not quite. It's a one-man team. You're a one-man team. No. no. <laughs> That is utterly I mean, impossible. It's, it's, $60 down, $20 to go. go. We go to Bill Cullen, please. Got to be. Eddie, uh, I know a story of a team that challenges anybody and all comers, and there's a pitcher and a catcher and a first baseman and a shortstop, and there's five men, pitcher, catcher, first baseman. That's a different team, then. There are only four men on his team. Well, and you don't need the uh, pitcher, shortstop. catcher, first baseman, and shortstop. That's all you need, four men, and you challenge anyone. You take on all comers, and as I recall, you haven't lost since, like, the day that Abner Doubleday invented basketball or something well, like that. Well, no, they've lost a few. They have won 1,947 games. They've lost 188. Better than the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the rest of the statistics here. It's just, he, he pitched 89 games in 78 days. That's 44 games in a day. Perfect games, he has pitched 128. Total games pitched, 2,164. Strikeouts. 36,597 documented. But that still is not his secret. His secret is that he once struck out 18 men and won a game blindfolded. That's fantastic. This guy's such a great softball pitcher that you just don't need any outfield. Henry could it's hit it. him if there were a bat here. Oh, ho, ho, he can hit him, but not the ball. We're going to give you a demonstration. <laughs> and by the way, I wouldn't advise you hitting him either. Let's, uh, let's open the curtains and give a little demonstration. I know. Now, Ed's going to, be the, is going to be the pitcher, and I will endeavor to catch him. Uh, by the way, I don't, I don't, one thing I ought to know is uh, how fast do you throw that thing? Well, a good softball pitcher throws about 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Introduce your own catcher, will you? <laughs> well, Gary, this is Ron Cooper. Ron Cooper is catcher. Oh, Ron. You <laughs> picked the kitchen? You go up there. <laughs> now we'll have a little warm-up. No, don't bother to move. He's accurate as he can be. Well, it's all though. underhand. And look at the speed of the ball. <laughs> Oops. The hard way. And all of them strikes, you'll notice. Between the legs. <laughs> a change up. Well, now, Henry, you asked about batting. <clears throat> <coughs> now we're going to ask him to do the incredible, which is to blindfold himself. And I'll not swing at the ball because I'm likely to foul it off in the audience. But just regard me as the batter. Put the blindfold on. He'll throw three pitches. And let's see if, <coughs> if they aren't three strikes. And I'll vouch for the fact this blindfold is a blindfold. To me, Ed. To me. Strike one. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Who's got it? Oh, he didn't throw it. All right, here we go. Come here, Eddie. What? Strike. Come here, Ed. Another strike right back across the table. The king and one one of his books. <laughs> now it is time for us to meet our special guest for tonight, the Toastmaster General of the United States, a man I've admired personally for a long time, author of a fine new book called Jessel Anyone. Here is naturally George Jessel. Good to see you. I was exceedingly touched watching the show tonight, Gary, particularly at the uh, quadruplets. 
uh, because of the fact that 16 years ago, that same week, I was in this theater, and I received four bits of news, not as happy as the quadruplets. I was told that I was being sued by three bookmakers and my wife ran away with a jockey. That's what I heard. <laughs> well, happy memories. Yeah. I enjoyed the joke you told at the beginning of the show. Well, I haven't got a secret, but I do know a lot of jokes. Well, this is what we've based tonight's shenanigans on. Uh, something that's a little different panel from our usual game. I've always believed, George, that most performers know most of the jokes that are around. Yes, they? they do. And in every city that I go in, and I've been in 124 in the last 136 days, there's always somebody that says, I know you've heard this, but I'll tell it to you anyway. And being tolerant, you have to listen. And oh, do you need buffering? They drive you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, George, we're never going to find out whether it's true or not of our panel. I have a little test I'd like to try out on them. Uh, before the show went on the air tonight, we asked everyone in the studio audience to write out on cards the latest joke they had heard. I have the cards right here. Now, in order to find out how up-to-date you are, I'm going to read only the punchline of the joke. And it'll be up to you to fill in the beginning of the joke. George gets first crack at it. If he comes up blank, uh, which he's bound to do on some of them at least, uh, then uh, the panel... Well, I'm older, so I don't know any of the younger jokes. <laughs> Well, all right, here's one where the man says, simply, here's the punchline. What trouble? What trouble? Is that the tag? The punchline is what trouble? I don't know that. Panel? I'm sure you know it, but the punchline is just the two words, so it's hard to identify. Yeah. Not you're going to make trouble for me. No, this is a guy who goes into the doctor's office, and he says, Doc, I'm in bad shape. I, I know it, I know oh. it. I know it. What's he say? He goes into the, uh, the psychiatrist's office. Yeah. And he says, Doctor, there's something uh, uh, terrible. I'm in great trouble. He says, wait here a few minutes. The doctor comes out and says to him, now, what is it? What trouble have you got? He says, what trouble? That's the fella. Oh, no. No? <laughs> no? Oh, wait a minute. He left out the middle. It can be about two Jews, so I don't know what it is. Then. <laughs> Goes in the psychiatrist says, I can't remember anything. That's right. I can't remember it. a thing I said. I it. can't remember a thing. Now, what's the matter with you? What is it? Uh, that's it. That's it. He says, well, what is it? And it wasn't so good even <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> All right. Here is one that you might have heard from, from the younger group. You're off your rocker. Uh, I know. <laughs> Let her tell it. Yeah. I know, Let I her know. tell it. Well, Betsy knows there. you're off your rocker. All yeah. right, Betsy. But Mr. Jessel, he's the guest, and it's his turn first. No, this is a new expression. I, I haven't even seen the subway yet. You know, I'm an old-fashioned guy. You tell <laughs> what it. What it is, is what did Whistler say when he saw his mother out in the garden hoeing rutabagas? Mother, you're off your rocker. Ah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shows you what age will do. I knew Whistler and his mother, and I didn't know this guy. <laughs> now, here's one, George, I'll, I'll take a personal bet on. I know you're going to know this one. Punchline is, the man said, I couldn't find any carrots. Have not any idea what that is? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, well, let's yeah. get Bill now. Bill, Bill you know that one? A fellow came into the saloon every day with uh, onions Sorry. stuck in his ears or celery or something. Uh, no, he came in every day with carrots stuck in his ears. Every day, and finally, after doing this for about three weeks, he came in with onions in there instead. And the fellow said, how come you got onions stuck in your ears? He said, I couldn't find any carrots. Which was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that was like herring rutabagas. <laughs> this is not my type of joke at all. <laughs> <laughs> how a thing like this can help Israel, I have no idea. <laughs> Well, if, here's one I hadn't heard, but I understand it's been around a lot lately. The punchline is, no wonder if you charge $5 a martini. Oh, oh that's a, that, that, that I know. That's a guy in a bar room, and a kangaroo comes in and orders a martini. And the guy serves him and gives him a bill for $5. And then when he pays it, the bartender looks at him, and the kangaroo says, what are you looking at? He says, gee, I never saw a kangaroo in a bar room before. And the kangaroo says, with these prices, you'll never see me again, either. <laughs> About bars, Jews, and kangaroos. That I know something about. Well, as a matter of fact, turns out you're completely wrong. It was a gorilla. Well, yeah, well, I <laughs> switch it. All right. Uh, here is a... Uh, oh. Here is a frank lady. She says, the worst joke I've ever heard. Um, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you the joke and see if you can furnish the punchline. What did Tarzan say when he saw an elephant coming through the jungle? <laughs> Yes, I, I've never associated with any of this type of people. I was, a, 
Here's the joke. What did Tarzan say when he saw an elephant coming through the jungle? He said, here comes an elephant. <laughs> Joke, you gotta tell it with a sweater on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we got one final one. Oh, here, this one I know. I'm the punchline is this I'm at the corner of walk and don't walk. Where um, are you? Yeah, the drunk. <laughs> no, a man was lost in New York and he had called a relative to come after him. And the relative asked him where he was. He said, I'm at the corner of walk and don't walk. Yeah. It's a joy having you with us. I am going to read this with great joy. I haven't had a chance, but a bookseller friend of mine told me that it's going quite, quite well. Well, it's not too frowned a poo profound a book, but it's the kind of book you can open anywhere and get a kind of a little giggle out of it. Well, good. Much happiness in the future, George Jessel. Thank and you so much. And continued deserve success for you. Thank you. Now, then, if we, uh, I have an important announcement to make. If we can open the curtains, please. Now, two weeks ago, our celebrity guest, Van Johnson, had the panel put their footprints in cement. At the end of that program, I announced that we would give these away to the first mayor or city official who phoned us requesting them. I said, first come, first serve. Now, as you can plainly see, my friends, these blocks of cement are still right here in the studio because I goofed. The moment... <laughs> well, that's nice. It makes two of us. Now, the moment, I, the moment I made the announcement, the CBS telephone switchboard lit up like a Christmas tree. And, uh, well, what I was surprised to, supposed to say, rather, was, was this. I was supposed to say, write to us. Don't call. Write to us. Consequently, there is no way of knowing who made the first phone call because they came in on about 17 lines at once. They were coming in from everywhere, all over the country. Now, as a result of all this confusion, we decided the only fair way to dispose of these cement blocks is to have a contest for them. Now, here are the rules. The contest is open to mayors, city officials, and chambers of commerce of cities and towns throughout the United States and Canada, wherever this program is seen. Hawaii, Alaska, too. To enter the contest, you must complete the following sentence in 25 words or less. Our town wants the I've got a secret footprints because. And tell us how you're going to use them. Number three, entries must be submitted on official mayors or any kind of city officials or chamber of commerce stationery. And neatness does count. Send the letters to Sidewalks, Box 103, General Post Office, New York 1, New York. Now, fourth, all entries must be postmarked on or before midnight July 20th and must be in our possession by July 26th. The decision of our judges will be final and conclusive and all entries become our property. Boy, none will be returned. The decision will be announced and I've got a secret on August 31st, 1960. So let's hear from all you Chamber of Commerces and we'll see you next week. Bye out there. Judge's decision on the cement block contest will be based on originality and importance of proposed use. Miss Myers is down by Mino. Be sure to watch Crystal Myers' show, Producer's Choice, on another network. See your local listings.